4-2, standard form of a quadratic function. So in this section, we're going to graph quadratic functions written in standard form. And our essential understanding is that for any quadratic function, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, the values of a, b, and c provide key information about its graph. And we can tell a whole bunch of stuff based on just what a, b, and c are. So, let's look at this girl kicking a soccer ball. Okay. So the function is going to be h is equal to negative 0 0.01 x squared plus 0.9x. That's going to be the height the soccer ball travels as, as it travels distance x. What is the maximum height of the ball? Well, unlike vertex form, which would show us the vertex of this function just by looking at it, I can't really tell. All I know is that at some point, this function has to reach a maximum and go back down. And that maximum is going to be the vertex of the function. Looks like it happens at about 45. So I could plug 45 into the function and figure out what, why it equals. Or I could use some techniques that we're about to go through to be able to figure out what this actually is. Okay, so in 4.1, we work with quadratic functions written in vertex form. So now we're going to use quadratic functions in a standard form. And the standard form of a quadratic equation is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. And this we are going to see throughout the rest of chapter 4. And we can find information about the graph of quadratic functions, like the vertex, easily from vertex form. We can still find it in quadratic form, but such, such information is hidden in standard form. However, standard form is easier to enter into a graphing calculator if we want to actually graph it. So we can find information about quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, from the coefficients of a, b, and from the constant term c. So using those three things, we can figure out what's going on in this function. And here's how we do it. Okay. So, first, the graph of ax squared plus bx plus c is a parabola. We know it's a parabola because it has x squared. Any function that has x squared is going to be a parabola when we graph it. We've, we've learned this before, that if a is greater than 0, the parabola opens up, and if a is less than 0, the parabola opens down. And a is in the same place. a is going to be the term in front of x squared. Now, the axis of symmetry, instead of my old axis of symmetry in vertex form was x is equal to h, now the axis of symmetry is going to be x is equal to negative b over 2a, okay. which means that the x coordinate of my vertex, which in vertex form was h, the x coordinate of my vertex is going to be negative b over 2a. And that's what the next one says right here. The x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. The y coordinate of the vertex is going to be f of negative 2 of f of negative b over 2a. Okay. So that means that we take the we take the answer we get for x and we plug it into my function and we get y. Okay. And we also know one other thing that we didn't know in vertex form. And that's my y-intercept, which is going to be 0, comma c, which makes sense because if I plug 0 in for both x's, I would have f of x is equal to c, which is y is equal to c. And if I look here at a graph with a greater than 0, I can see that the graph opens up. I have my axis of symmetry in red right there. I have my vertex right down there, which is b is equal to negative 2a, comma, f of b, f of negative b over 2a. That is the x coordinate of the vertex and the y coordinate of the vertex. The x coordinate we can calculate, and then we plug that x in to the function to get the y coordinate. And the same thing happens with the function with a negative a. It just opens the other way. It just opens down. Okay. Let's see where... Let's see where this negative b over 2a actually comes from. Okay. 
So if we look at the formula in vertex form, we can expand it to determine the properties of a graph of a quadratic function written in standard form. Okay, so let's do that. Let's expand this. So we are going to square x minus h, remembering that that means that we multiply it by itself. And in order to do that, you have to FOIL this. We have to multiply the x by both terms, the h by both terms. So that's going to turn into x squared minus xh minus xh, the first, the outside, the inside, and then the last, minus h squared, and of course these can combine to give me minus 2xh plus k on the end. Okay. Distributing the a gives me ax squared minus 2hax, I'm going to write the variable last, uh, minus a h squared plus k. And now, if I look at this, just like I would look at a function in standard form, I can tell that this is the term in front of x squared. This is the term to a h in front of x. And these two terms are constants, and they don't have a variable. So I can see here that my a term didn't change at all from vertex form. a was out front here in front of my parentheses with x minus h squared, and a is by itself in front of x squared. That means that from vertex form and standard form, A does not change at all. However, if we look at my B term, okay, it's very hard to relate what that is in terms of X or H. Well, I know that my B term, right, that B is going to be equal to that whole thing, negative 2AH. Which means if I want to get H by itself, that B, that H, the X coordinate of my vertex, is going to be equal to negative B over 2A, okay? which is where my formula actually comes from. And since this is the X coordinate of my vertex, I can plug that in to find K, the Y coordinate of my vertex, instead of messing around with this, so C is equal to all that sort of stuff. Easier to just plug in and figure out what your your vertex point is. Okay, so let's see how we're actually going to do this. Okay, let's graph this function. So the first thing we're going to do is identify A, B, and C. So A is equal to one, B is equal to two, and C is equal to three, coming from those three numbers right there. Okay, so next, we know that my axis of symmetry my axis of symmetry is going to be x is equal to negative b over 2a. This is also going to be the x-coordinate of my vertex. Okay, so all I need to do is plug the numbers in, negative b, so that would be negative 2 over 2 times 1, which would be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Okay. So now that I have my x coordinate of my vertex, find the y coordinate of the vertex. So y is going to equal, well, I know what x is now, negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. And that's going to give me my y coordinate of the vertex, which is going to be 2. Because I want to know where, when, when x at the axis of symmetry, what is my y coordinate? And I can graph this, negative 1, 2, right there. Okay. And that's my vertex, negative 1, 2. Okay. Now that I know my vertex, I can use C to find my y-intercept, which is 3. And I can also reflect that point around the axis of symmetry. 
So I know another point right there. And then from those three points, I can now graph the line, knowing, or graph the curve, knowing that because A is positive 1, that this graph is going to open one, up, which is what I can I see here. Now I can also plug some more points in to try and get a more accurate idea of what this graph looks like, but I'm just going to wing it a little bit and say it looks something like that. Okay? <laughs> but that's the most important part right there, that we know how to find the x-coordinate of the vertex by using negative b over 2a. And once we do this, we can change graphs into from standard form into vertex form because all we need to do with vertex form, we have y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. I need to know k. I need to know h, which is my vertex. And I need to know a, which I already know from standard form, which is 2. Okay. So all I need to do to change something into vertex form is to actually find the vertex. So let's do it. The x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Okay. So that's going to be negative 10 over 2 times 2. So that's negative 10 over 4, which, let's change that to a decimal, gives me negative 2.5. The y coordinate of the vertex, all I have to do is just plug in x into my original function. Negative 2.5 squared plus 10 times negative 2.5 plus 7. Calculating that gives me a y coordinate of negative 5.5 which gives me a vertex of negative 2.5 comma negative 5.5. Okay. Now that I know my vertex, now I can plug it back in to H and K and change this into vertex form. So my vertex form, realizing of course that A does not change, A is still two, that Y is gonna be equal to 2 times x minus negative 2.5, so plus 2.5 squared, because this is a parabola, minus 5.5. And that is how we change something from standard form to vertex form. Okay. We can also interpret quadratic graphs, quadratic graphs and let them help us solve real world problem like this bridge problem right here the new river gorge bridge in west virginia is the world's largest steel single arch bridge you can model the arch which the with the function y is equal to negative 0 0.00498 x squared plus 0.847 x where x and y are in feet how high above the river is the arch how long is the section of the bridge above the arch? Well, looking at the graph, if I want to know, first of all, I know that the, the arch is 516 feet above the river. If I want to know the height of the arch, I should figure out the point where it is the highest, which just happens to be the vertex, which just happens to be an easy point to find. So let's do it. So the X coordinate of my vertex, I can find by the formula negative b over 2a, which would be negative 0.847 over 2 times negative 0.000498. Okay. With a nice calculator and some calculations, this gives me 850 feet, about. So that is the x coordinate of the vertex. So if I wanted to know the total distance of the arch, well, if I know if the x coordinate of the vertex is, is 850 feet, I know the total arch, right? If that's 850 feet, 
I know the total arch is going to be another 850. So the total arch is going to be 1,600 feet. Okay, next, let's figure out the y coordinate of the vertex. And all we have to do here is plug it into the function. So my function is negative 0 0.000498 times 850 squared plus 0.847 times 850. Okay. Working that out with the calculator gives me that my bridge is about 360 feet, which then I take, if this distance right here from the top of the bridge is 360 feet, I take 516 and I take 360 and I figure out that this total distance from the river to the top of the bridge is going to be 876 feet. And we can figure all that out by just knowing the X and Y coordinate of the vertex.